Hey everybody, welcome to our character types tutorial for Crazy Talk Animator. In this tutorial I'm going to be demonstrating the different types of characters that we have in CTA 2 as well as their different capabilities. So let's start in by, uh, start off by importing in some actors here. We'll go to our actor tab on the left, on the right hand side here in the content manager and into our uh, character folder. And let's bring in a G1 character first. So you see that G1 characters are actually the uh, CTA 1 characters. Um, and they actually have a few limitations as compared to the CTA 2 characters. So let's go ahead and drag in one of them first. Let's drag in our uh, Cherry01. Now if you're loading in a custom actor from CTA 1, uh, you'll come up with this. It'll come up with this uh, dialog box here and it'll ask you to choose a corresponding angle uh, for CTA 2. Now most characters from CTA 1, uh, most G1 characters, uh, have 0 degrees or 315 degree profiles. So for this one, you can see in the image that it's uh, at 315 degrees. So I'll just select that value and press OK. And that'll import in our cherry character. Uh, so let's go back to the uh, character folder and let's go over to G2. And then we'll bring in our G2 cherry. And just click and drag her in. We don't have any any uh, angle definition uh, pop up there. So now you have our two cherries, uh, G1 and G2. Let's take a look at uh, what makes these characters different. Um, so G2 characters have a few advantages over G1 characters. The most important is um, if I select my character and I go over to the uh, motion key editor or press the M hotkey, you can see that I have my character um, in this 3D motion key editor and I have the ability to select a number of different angle profiles. So if I drag this slider over, you can see that my character uh, will go in these different poses um, according to the value that I set. So this character, uh, G2 character, actually has a whole um, library of sprites for different angles and different profiles. So G2 characters are able to um, perform 3D motions at any different angle. Let's go to the G1 cherry now and try the same thing. You can see that if I move the slider value for her, her arms kind of awkwardly twist around, her body and her head are kind of staying in the same place. Um, so basically, G1 characters are limited to 2D motions. Uh, however, some 3D motions do work on G1 characters. Here's a quick table for your reference about uh, the capabilities of G1 versus G2 characters. If you have any questions, you can always come back to look at this table. Let's take a look at the motions then. So let's go to the content manager and let's check out our uh, motions. So let's go to motions and then we'll go into the 2D folder. And in 2D folder, let's go to our perform folder. Let's take a look at a couple of motions here. Now you can see that the uh, angle of the motion is indicated in the top left as well. Let's try and apply a couple of these to uh, our characters here. Let's apply this uh, snooze one um, to our G1 cherry first. So if I double click that, that will apply to my uh, character. And it'll bring up this box asking me to ensure that uh, my character's profile and my angle profile are the same. And I'll press OK. And you can see that she's kind of dozing off there. She's got a, a good animation. Uh, nothing wrong with that one. G2 uh, cherry can do the same thing with the 315 degrees. She'll just change her profile to 315 degrees. However, if we do the same thing for the zero degree sneeze, let's take a look at how Cherry will change. She'll now face the camera because she has the uh, forward zero degree profile. However, uh, G1 Cherry does not. So if we apply the same one to her, um, she will have the same kind of 315 degree facing head. Uh, everything else will be pretty similar, but uh, that's a huge difference um, when you're applying 2D motions to G2 and G1 characters. Now G1 characters are also very limited when it comes to 3D motions. So let's go to the uh, motion uh, folder here again and 3D motions. Let's go to uh, dance. Let's bring in a uh, 3D dance uh, move here, this uh, Michael Jackson move. So if I just uh, double click on the MJ uh, motion here, you can see that Cherry will do her nice uh, MJ spin like that, which is pretty cool. Um, however, if we try the same thing on our G1 character, um, it'll come up with this and it'll ask me to... Uh, there's, it'll let me know that there's a number of different ways that I can actually um, modify this character. So it is compatible with uh, 3D motions. Um, but we'll get into those uh, in the other tutorials. We'll just press OK for now. And you can see that Cherry will kind of uh, kind of awkwardly spin around like that. And, you know, nothing is really um, working there as far as the body angles go. So it doesn't really look very Michael Jackson, uh, Michael Zach Jackson-ish, I guess. So you can see there's a lot of uh, troubles there. So that's one, one uh, example of 3D motions not working on uh, G1 characters. However, some motions may, may not look that bad, such as uh, this music listen. We'll just uh, apply that over top of the uh, MJ motion. So you can see now she's, uh, even though it's a 3D motion, she's kind of just uh, grooving along there. And that one works just fine. Uh, the same one if we apply to uh, uh, G2 Cherry, you can see that she'll maintain that uh, front profile. However, we can uh, go here and we can 
use the bracket key is actually a hot key to uh, change the angle of the character. So we can change her to like 45 degrees, 90 degrees. So you can see there we get a nice um, uh, back, back view of, of Cherry. And we can change that to any, any other angle and play the same animation as well. Okay, so that's the general difference between G1 and G2 characters. Let's start a new project to get all these uh, characters out of our way here and go back to the actor tab. Now we're going to take a look at uh, hybrid characters. So we have two hybrid characters that come default with Crazy Talk Animator 2. Uh, the first one is this uh, onion dude here. And the second one is our image-based uh, character named Ted, who has uh, three single hairs on his head. Um, so let's import in Mr. Onion first, and then we'll uh, bring in Mr. Ted. And let's take a look at these characters. Now, uh, Crazy Talk Animator 2 no longer has body photo fitting. Um, however, uh, so all of the characters, uh, their bodies will be sprite-based. Uh, now, the sprite-based uh, means you can import either images or vector-based uh, drawings um, for all your characters' body parts. These two characters um, have images for their body parts. You can see that Mr. Onion here consists of a potato body, onion head, uh, pepper arms, and asparagus uh, eyebrows, and all this stuff. These are actually just individual sprites um, that are taken from images. So if I select my sprite editor and I select uh, his eyes, you can see that he has a number of different eyes here. Um, just different images that we've uh, taken. Um, the mouth is interesting because the mouth is actually just um, orange, an orange at different shapes. You can see uh, if I replace those sprites, they're just different uh, different images. So this kind of animation is very useful. Uh, for, you know, you, you can just cut out um, certain um, parts or anything like that, and you can attach it to a certain body part of your character. Uh, if we go over to uh, our other character here, you can see his eyes are just uh, separate images. Now these characters, if, if you uh, zoom in really closely, you can see a little bit of distortion and that indicates that uh, they are image-based characters. Whereas characters who are uh, created consisting of vector drawings won't have that sort of uh, distortion. So let's go ahead and start a new project again. And let's add in our last examples of characters here. Let's add in a sprite-based character and a morph-based character. So we'll go again to our content manager. And our sprite-based character, we can add in uh, Mr. Walter here. He's a G2 character, one of our default ones. And there's Walter. Let's go back to the character folder and G1. And let's add in Mr. Rosenberg here. Mr. Rosenberg is uh, one of our characters. Uh, he's a zero degree character um, from CTA1. And he is actually a morph based character. Now, morph based and image based, or sorry, morph based and sprite based characters um, have different facial animation types. So, as you saw with the earlier characters, if I wanted to do some facial animation for them, I had to basically replace the sprites. Um, however, if I'm doing this with uh, my character, Mr. Rosenberg here, let's take a look at the uh, facial puppet uh, motion editor here. And we'll just press OK for that. Um, so I'm going to toggle over to uh, facial puppet tool. And I can choose any one of these profiles. We can choose something like this. And if I preview this, take a look at how um, his face changes. Um, it's basically morphing the image. So you can have characters like this. Um, if you do facial photo fitting, you can actually morph the image to create all of these expressions. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I do the same thing for Walter, and I preview that. You can see that his animations are created with uh, sprite switching. So the eyes and the mouth are changing. You can blink his eyes, just like uh, Mr. Rosenberg, but the uh, type of animation is quite different. So that's about all the uh, different types of characters we have in Crazy Talk Animator 2. Uh, we'll have other further tutorials. If you have more questions about character animation, you can check out our introduction to character animation tutorial as well.